I am tired of people still hating on Tua Tonga Valoa. What is up and welcome back to Nando Talk. I'm normally a very positive guy. We do normally positive Dolphins talk, but I'm a little TO'd. Yes, we had an amazing win against the Baltimore Ravens and Tua Tonga Valoa had a phenomenal game. 469 yards, six touchdowns, a comeback win. By all means, by all purposes, this kid was phenomenal, absolutely bonkers, and he is still getting hated. He's still getting disrespected, and I'm absolutely tired of it. I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sick of seeing that Tua is the only quarterback that I've ever seen get hated on for having good weapons, who can have a six-touchdown game and still get criticized, who makes play after play, and all I hear is, he threw it to the open player. Anybody can do that. No, not everybody can do that because not a lot of quarterbacks have thrown for 450 plus yards and six TDs. In fact, who is the only young QB to have done it? How many six touchdown games does Justin Herbert have? Zero. How many five touchdown games does Justin Herbert have? Zero. And we slob around this kid and we applaud Justin Herbert for every single thing he does. And rightfully so because he's a talented arm, talented quarterback, big boy with a lot of potential. But when it comes to winning, Justin Herbert has a 16 and 18 record versus to a 17 and 8 record. And I get it. Wins aren't a QB stat and wins aren't a QB stat, but wins mean winning football. At the end of the day, a duh, wins are a good thing. How can you disagree? How can you even try to discredit that? The fact that Tua has a winning record and still gets criticized is crazy. But okay, you want to say that Tua can't have a big day. Tua just had a massive day where he just balled out and beat out Lamar Jackson, who had a phenomenal day in his own right with 350-plus passing yards, 100 rushing yards, and Tua was still the best quarterback on that field. This man just gets unfair hate after unfair hate. He led four touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win the game, four touchdowns to lead a comeback, and he's still getting nitpicked and criticized, saying that he did what he was expected to do and that anybody could have done it because they have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Newsflash. Quarterbacks are supposed to look for the open player and play it to them. Yes, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle made Tua's life easier, but Tua is still the guy making those plays, throwing it to where only they can get it, dotting it up to Micah, taking a high pass where only he can snag it, and you'll still have haters like Colin Cowherd say that that's an over overthrow. How ridiculous can you get? How much worse is it supposed to get? This is a man who threw a beautiful dime pass, and you'll still have clowns like Colin Hayden on it. What else can Tua do? Do you want 700 yards, 10 touchdowns? Come on. Like, this is a guy who you say has no no pocket presence, no movability, and then he hits a beautiful spin move to roll out and dot it up to River Craycraft for a touchdown. This is a guy who you say can't hit it deep and then throws it 55 yards in the air, 40 yards in the air, 47 yards in the air to Tyreek, to Jalen Waddle, and he still gets hated on because now he was expected to throw that in perfect triple coverage. He's they no, instead of the open receiver. Tua is a smart guy. He's going to go for the open guy. You want to throw in the tight coverage? Tua will do it too because Tua just wins. He finds a way. He doesn't make excuses. We find reasons why he's being held back, but now the reasons are gone. The weapons are there. The system is there. The coach is trusting him, and most importantly, Tua is trusting in himself. We talked about leaving meat on the bone in the past, about him getting confidence in his arm. This past Sunday, Tua unleashed that confidence. He said, I am back. Did you hear his last little his little speech for the game-winning drive, it's us or them. It's us or them, and I love that. It fired up the players, and it's firing me up right now. It is us or them, and that is the mentality that every Dolphins fan has to have right now, that every that Tua has right now, that all of our players have. It is us or them. It is us or the rest of the NFL, because no matter what happens, no matter how good of a game the Dolphins have, there will always be haters and doubters who are going to try to attack and chip away at our little Dolphins. Unfairly, unjustly so, but that's just the case matter. That's just how the NFL is unfolding right now. I'm sick. I'm tired of it. It ends this season. This year when the Dolphins make the playoffs and we show everybody, bam, wakata, we deserve to be here, it'll be shown. It'll be proven. I'm tired of it. If Justin Herbert did what Tua did on Sunday, we would be crowning Justin Herbert in the Hall of Fame right now. Manuel Acho, you got it spot on the head, bro. If Justin Herbert outscored the other team 28 to 3 in the fourth quarter, threw for four touchdowns, threw play after play, instead of a pick six like he did it to the Chiefs, if Justin Herbert was balling in the fourth quarter, throwing touchdown after touchdown instead of pick six after pick six, you could convince me that there's no hope for Tua that Justin Herbert is this god that everybody paints him out to be. But the fact of the matter is, Justin Herbert has those pretty stats, and then he has those back-breaking, bone-crushing interceptions, those blunders that just make you wonder, how can the 16-18 and 18 bum be 
QB one of that class. He's not a winner. He doesn't have the it factor that just that Joe Burrow does. He doesn't even have the winning poise that Tua does because my guy Tua say what you want about his limitations. He knows them, understands them, and still finds ways to succeed and win because that's what winners do. That's what champions do. And Tua's got it in his genes. He's got it in the bone. He's ready to lead this Miami <clears throat> offense. We finally saw it. You can hate all you want about that week one performance, 270 yards and a touchdown, which is still not a bad performance. The expectation was that that was a ceiling and everything else was just going to regress back to last year's 220 yards, a touchdown, a pick, sloppy play. But that is not the case. We told you. We pounded the table, said two has displayed us his floor as 270 yards and a touchdown. His floor, if he's being average and not the best, being more conservative. When he's aggressive, when he's dialed up, when he needs to, we have now seen that two has the capability of, <clears throat> of going over 400 yards of throwing six touchdowns, of doing something that few others have shown they can do and still win the game, that he can find it in himself to not quit and to rally up his other men. All those little narratives that Tua can't go over 400 yards, Tua can't throw for more than five TDs, that Tua can't take over and he can't beat another quarterback who's playing at the top level, that he's not going to win an offensive shootout, that he's not going to maximize his offense, that in the fourth quarter he's going to crumble, that he can't lead his team to victory. All those narratives after narratives after narratives were just shot away, shot down, and stripped apart as Tua grabbed it by the nuts and just commanded respect and demanded that his destiny be changed. Because that's what we're getting to see from Tua Tungvaloa. A new man, a new player with a new set of focus and goals. We're talking about a team that was projected by some fools to go 1-4 and four to start. to go, Which means we'd only beat the Jets probably. To start 0-4, to lose every single game. That's embarrassing. That's insanity. I'm glad there's people who have the receipts. I'm not an I told you so person. But I did know that we were going to go at least... Three and two after week five, meaning two and two entering week five versus the Jets and beating them to put us back up over 500. And what are we? Not even in my wildest hopes was I expecting us to win a game like that, like we did on, on Sunday. We're two and oh, and all we have to do is just beat the Jets to get to three and two. If we beat Buffalo or the Bengals, we're looking pretty at three and one, four and one after week five and entering the softer part of our schedule. All my days, the Dolphins are ready to take off. This is the year. This is the moment. Like Tua just seized it on Sunday. We have to continue to seize and continue to hold on and continue to make these moves and continue to ball out. The Dolphins are right there, right on the cusp. And this, as important as that Baltimore game was, as alt, as a, as big of a moment as it was, as franchise-altering as that win and comeback win was to allow us to be masters of our own destiny, have faith and confidence in our team, this Sunday we face an even bigger test, an even bigger challenge. If you had said that Tua Tungvaloa had any hope of keeping up with Josh Allen before, they would have probably sent you to an insane asylum. I don't know, electroshock therapy and just try to fix you up, man. But now, now there's a shining glimmer of hope in my eye that these two gentlemen right here, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, can continue to ball out. What, Kyrie Elam is going to stop him? Ain't no way. My guy Tua is going to dot him up, continue to find the open guys. Yes, the Bills have a crazy secondary. Mike Hyde a little banged up. But in general, still a great safety group, you know. And Marcus Williams for the Ravens had a great game. Their corners were banged up, though, and we saw what happens. Eventually, the floodgates will open. Eventually, we'll fire on cylinders. I want it to happen throughout the game. As in, I want the Bills' points to be spread out, not come all very early like the, the Ravens did. And I want the Dolphins to also score spread out, not all at the ends, just like we did against the, uh, Baltimore. I need the Dolphins to have a complete game not only have an amazing offense like we did week two, but bring back that strong offense defense we saw week one and have a strong special team showing. A complete game from all three facets of our team, and this Dolphins team is going to go wild. I've been saying 35-31 for the Dolphins. I've been saying now that two is going to hang with the big boys, and no matter what happens, he's going to keep pace with that offense. But I want us to start with the ball, and I want I want Tua to just go out there early, lead a drive, bada beam, bada bam touchdown and show Buffalo we're here to play we're ready to go and we're ready to keep up I would love nothing more than that for this Dolphins offense to keep firing all cylinders and the Dolphins defense to clamp up a bit 35 31 a close game that the Dolphins win put a statement and say we're top of the AFC we're contenders we're top dogs we beat the Buffalo Bills and there's nobody gonna hold us back no one to fear and I'm with it I am ready the Miami Dolphins are here for the moment here for the vibes and nobody's going to tell me otherwise. Let's go, Dolphins. Beat Buffalo and show the world, show the NFL. It's the time of the Miami Dolphins. It's the year of the fin. We freaking ride. Let's go.
But thank you for tuning into this video. Thank you for listening to Nando talk. I hope you guys enjoyed the little ramble. It's always been fun. I will be going live on Thursday, 3 p.m. I'm still trying to figure out the times, but 3 p.m. seems to be working, seems to be in the consistency going. We'll go an hour, two hours, whatever you guys want to rock with, and it'll be a fun time. Still trying to find that second date, probably Tuesdays, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. I'm going to see because I get a little beat after doing Miami Sports Music in the morning. Stephen D runs a phenomenal show with Roach the Great Producer. And my guy, Nikki Smokes, helping me and him do a little help with a little co-hosting. And it's a fun, fun time. So we'll still figure out the secondary times for my live streams. But be sure to catch me Thursdays, Thursdays, 3 p.m., a fun time live on the Nando Talk for the Good Dolphins vibes. Subscribe to the YouTube at Nando Talk. Follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and we'll keep bringing you vibes. Fittens up. Thanks for having a good time. And hope you enjoyed the video. A peace. Bam, bam.